back with another youtube video and happy mother's day today we have these really short nails these nails has to be the shortest nails on my channel but i actually think these may be my favorite my client did recently get a new job so she wanted to keep her nails short but she really didn't mind adding some extra charms on top so that's what we ended up doing but i still was only charging her for a simple set just because it was my idea to add a bunch of extra stuff but she ended up tipping me $30, so it worked out pretty well in the end anyways. After using the ball bit, I did start to file her natural nails using this 180 grit sanding band. I'm just going to lightly go off the natural nail. And I also do get really, really close to the cuticle area when I'm using this bit. Before using the sanding band, I do rub it against a hand file. This way, the edges of the sanding band won't be sharp, so I'm not going to cut my client. I know I should have cut her nails first, but I did end up cutting her nails after I finished using the sanding band. I'll be using this 100 grit file to lightly go over the nail tip one more time just to make sure that the corners of the nail tip is not sticking out. When you start your application, it may not show, but later when you start to reshape the nails, the nail tip will show if you did not properly blend it in the first place. After making sure that they were all the same size, I did go in with my dehydrator. I also went in with one coat of my Young Nails Protein Bond and one coat of my No Lift Primer. I knew I was going to like these nails because I was already really liking the shape. And normally, I don't like short nails. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Like Recently, probably within the last few months, I started to like short nails a lot more. But when I first started doing nails, I used to run away from doing short nails. And I think at a point, I did not offer them. In my last short nail video, they wasn't as short as these. I definitely feel like the shape and the actual structure of these came out better. But I did ask y'all if y'all felt like doing shorter nails was harder. And I did get a lot of mixed opinions. For the application today, I'm going to be using Bad and Bougie from Valentino. I love this cover color way more than I like Perfect Nude from Valentino. But I am going to start off with doing two beads. So I would love to try to do a one bead method, but I wanted to make sure the application came out perfect. So I wasn't going to risk it today. Yeah, see that the bead I picked up wasn't too big. Valentino's cover colors does dry a little quickly. So I was starting to apply more pressure towards the bottom of the nail to make sure that it reached all the way down. And afterwards, I'm going to start to clean up the side walls and reshape the acrylic. For the cuticle application, the bead is not that dry. It's dry, it's not gonna run, but it's also gonna flow into the cuticle area very easily and I won't have to use my brush to get too close. Now it may spill a little bit, so you guys are gonna see me go back and clean it up, but y'all see it, it looks really good. When I was a beginner nail tech, my cuticle application was not as close to the cuticle as it is now. Y'all can see on this nail, it's extremely close. And this is because the bead was not that dry. When you have to actually press down on the bead to get it to go closer, it gives a different look versus when you just allow the acrylic to flow there very, very slowly. So when I first place the bead down, I'm going to make sure that the top of the bead is flat to the nail and then focus on the rest of the acrylic powder. The goal is to have a very smooth application. So when it's bulky like that up there, you may have to do extra work to get the entire nail smooth, which is going to take more time later when you have to file and reshape these nails. 
cuticle application again make sure that you're holding the finger down and y'all see that i'm just lightly pressing the acrylic powder up my actual brush is not getting too close to the skin and the acrylic powder did all the work for me so all i have to do is start to blend this down with the rest of the acrylic powder I cannot believe I came on here with my nails looking like this. I know they look a little crazy. And I actually be real jealous of my clients when I'm finished with their nails. Because they'd be like, dang, like, why I'm walking around with no nails on? And I used to keep them done. But I really just don't know what happened. Like, I have to really, really want to do my nails and have an idea. And then I'm like, okay, let's do it. But sometimes when it comes to my own nail, my mind would just go blank. But once it's time to freestyle on somebody else... It's it's easy. Everything is coming to me. I got the perfect color scheme. Like, I don't get it. Y'all can let me know if y'all have the same kind of issue. And I really feel like that's why I don't do my nails often. Because I really like to do freestyles. And if there's no freestyle coming up in my brain, I'm not going to even risk it. Right here for the thumb application, some of the product did touch the skin, so I actually went back in with a cuticle pusher to remove the skin from the product. This was because it was already too dry and my brush was not going to be able to remove it. This is my favorite part of doing these short nails was how perfect I got them when they were finished being filed. So this is not the drill bit that I normally use, but this is the drill bit that I will now be using. I do like this drill bit, but it does not have a safety on it at all. So this is one of those drill bits that you really have to be careful with because you will cut somebody. When I'm in the cuticle area, I will slow down the drill just because I want to be careful. Like I said, I don't want to cut hair and I'll also turn the nail from the side so I could actually see how close I'm getting to the skin with the drill bit. So I got super, super close with these. I really feel like when I was finished with filing, they looked really natural, like they was coming out her nail for real. With the drill bit, I am filing from right to left. I'm making sure that I'm getting the sidewalls as well because I really, really need these to be as smooth as possible, especially when I'm drawing on these French tips. The application also was a little thick for short nails. Not too thick, but I did feel like I gave the nails too high of an apex, so I did go back to file them down a little more. Before I start to buff these nails, I did want to go over the free edge one more time and I also wanted to take my drill bit and go underneath the nail to get the nail to be a little thinner. I also really like the C-curve look. I don't know if I'm too much of a fan of the moon cut on shorter nails. Not really, but I do like to do this.
I did have my client go wash her hands before we continued. It's finally time for the French tip. I feel like doing French tip on short nails is the easiest and this is how I do it. I am going to start on the right side and start to bring in my brush to create the smile line on one side and then I'll do it to the other side. Since these nails are shorter, I don't have to create like the whole triangle T thing and it's going to be much easier to just make the white thicker if I would like to. After cleaning up the smile line, I did also go back and make sure that I had gel polish on the side walls before moving on. And I'll be doing the same thing here where I'm going to start on the very edge of the nail, bring my brush in, and then do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm also going to use my dotting tool to add some crock print. So the Frenchies are already completely cured and I also only did one coat of white because for the most part, the pink crock print covers majority of the nail. At the moment, I thought I was going to want to do something different on her ring finger, but when I was finished adding all the charms and I seen how cute the nails was, I really was not too sure what I was going to put right there that wasn't going to just throw the whole thing off. Now for the charms, I'm going to be using my Zule Bling Glue to apply these charms because most of these are pretty small. And I did start off with this big butterfly. Now this butterfly came in a pack of many different butterflies that I got from Amazon. They came in gold and silver and I'm going to link those down below because I really, really like these. I did add some 3D flowers to here too. I didn't make them. These are some 3D flowers that you could purchase from Amazon. I love using these and I really like putting them around the chrome heart charms. I told you guys earlier that I really wasn't too sure what I wanted to do with the ring finger. So I ended up doing something similar to the rest of the nails. But for this one, I wanted to add some more flowers. When you purchase these flowers, you'll notice that they have caviar beads. And they also have little diamonds that you could put in the center of each flower. Now this is a little time consuming to do this if you have a bunch of flowers. It is worth it. I do actually really like to place the caviar beads in the center of the flowers. When I'm top coating these nails, I am going to make sure that I top coat the flowers too. I do not top coat the charms, but I do make sure that I top coat those flowers.
For applying the caviar beads inside of the flowers, I am going to continue to use my Zule Bling Glue. And once I'm finished with that, I'm going to top coat these and I'm going to show you how they came out. I know I said this already, but I really, really think these are my favorite set of nails. Like These are so cute and I really do want to do some short nails on myself, but that might be taking it a little too far. So I am going to show you guys how they came out and you guys can let me know down below how much you would pay for these nails and also what you would like to see next.